K-Gun 9 on your side sports. It's football Friday night with the Wildcats in Texas tonight. A couple of varsity squads with some Wildcat targets here in Tucson. I'm Erica Weston. And I'm Max Darrow in for Jason Barr. Sienega quarterback Jamari Joyner, he's already committed to the University of Arizona. And it appears they're going to need him. The Wildcats might have a problem at quarterback this season, but their solution might be right here in town. Through three games, Joyner has 15 total touchdowns, and he's got no sign of slowing down. And though he has already committed to Arizona, Joyner is seeing some extra attention from other schools, Nebraska and Michigan, to name a few. So Arizona may need to work extra hard to keep him, keep him here in Tucson. Let's get to the action. Flowing Wells came out looking to upset Sienega. There they start off, but... So did Joyner and his Bobcats. Here he is, first quarter, QB sneaks it up the middle, touchdown, and his Bobcats, they did not slow down. Another drive, another touchdown. This time, Joyner hands it off to Nathan Amico. He finds the end zone, and minutes later, it'll go to Joyner again, takes a snap, rolls out to the right. Is he gonna pass? Yes, he is. He will connect with Terrell Huggins for another Sienga TD. Flowing Wells hoping to get something going, but quarterback Dylan Allison fumbles this one. Sienega recovers it, sets them up for another touchdown. They win this one 56 to 14. All right, Catalina Foothills head coach Jeff Skurin going for win number 300 tonight in coaching stints at the high school level, junior college, and in Italian leagues. Skurin is considered an all-time great here in Tucson, so could we see him back as a college coach? Well, I don't know, Max. I'm sure plenty of other teams have been calling, but the Falcons hoping to celebrate coach's 300th win tonight facing Empire. Empire scored a touchdown on the first play of the game, but they missed a two-point conversion. So now second quarter Ravens quarterback Alex Verdugo, not the baseball player, hits Brandon Walker there and he's in for the touchdown. Empire would go for the two point conversion again. This time on the fake as Walker gets the low snap and heads for the end zone. He'd be stopped short of the goal line. Empire up 12 nothing and on the ensuing kickoff Dominic Bynum on the return picks it up finds some room to run and he takes off downfield. They would stop him at around midfield as the ball comes loose and Empire would recover. But the Falcons would take this one in overtime. Jeff Skern's career 300th win. And two powerhouses in football. Tucson paying a visit to Mountain View. First quarter, Badgers with the ball. Quarterback Jesus Montano with the keeper. And he takes off. He's in for the touchdown. Badgers on the board first, seven nothing. Now second quarter, Mountain View with the ball. Wyatt Adams breaks off with a nice run. That ties the ball game up at seven to piece, and they weren't done there later in the half. This time it's Varney Larson's turn with a nice run here for Mountain View. Mountain View gets the win, 42 to 20. Let's head on over to Choya Magnet High School. We will go see the Chargers hosting the Palo Verde Titans. Have a day, Jordan Porter. Troya's senior quarterback looks to pass it here, tucks it decides to see what he can do on the ground. He scores, takes into the end zone, and look at him right here. He is pumped up. Now that was about a five yard TD run, Erica. This one, a little bit longer. He scans the field, dodges a defender, another one, and he just starts running and he will not stop. 63 yards later. That's impressive. He's in the end zone for another Chargers touchdown. Troya beats Palo Verde 62 to 23. Now Santa Rita visiting Catalina. Santa Rita has been outscored 114 to six in the last two weeks. That's not including a canceled season opener. Second quarter, Catalina up 21 nothing. Jesus Moreno throws this one up for grabs and it's picked off by Catalina's Philippe Quijana. Later in the half, Catalina in the driver's seat. Leon Hayes hits Quijana again. He takes off down the field, dodges one, two, and three defenders as blockers clear the way. That was great blocking. Yeah, actually. yeah. Touchdown, Catalina. Catalina wins this one 56 to 6. All right, now we saved the best for last, right? When Arizona target Bijan Robinson isn't hurtling over the defenders like he did last week, he's running into the end zone. Last week against Tucson High, we saw the South Point sophomore running back rush for 209 yards and two touchdowns. Robinson is on pace to rush for well over 2,000 yards this season. Here we go, let's get right to this action. South Point Catholic under the lights. Fans are excited for the game. Lancers quarterback uh, Rodrigo Nieto started off pretty well for them. Uh, I guess some more fans are excited here. And, How can uh, they not? B. Yeah. John Robinson's been really impressive. Absolutely. Here's a, a good play right there by, uh, excuse me, um, by Sunnyside. Then a great diving catch right here for South Point. Sunnyside will try the same thing. It didn't work out so well. 
And right here is one of the best plays of the game. A South Point connection. Quarterback to receiver dances up that sideline, skirts into the end zone. South Point increases their record this year to 4 0, wins 38 to 15. All right, undefeated Push Ridge hosting Salrita tonight. Lions looking like one of the top teams in Tucson. Still early, but we'll see. Second half. Push Ridge leading 20 to nothing. Lions QB Ryan Garcia with a short touchdown run. Lions on top 27 to nothing. Now later in the half, Salrita ball. Quarterback Daniel Valdez avoids the sack. Turns it into something positive, into this. He scrambles into the end zone for the touchdown. Salrita on the board, 27-7. But that was it for Salrita. Push Ridge was relentless. Quarterback Dakota Haynes with a long touchdown run, a 50-yard run to make it 34-7 as the Lions go on to top Salrita, 49-7. And let's get quickly to some NCAA football action. Arizona up 56 to 16 over UTEP in the fourth quarter. Wildcats ahead a lot. Just what those fans needed to see. Yeah, one more thing we had before we head to break. The Indians, unfortunately, the win streak comes to an end at 22 games and a 4-3 loss to the Royals. I'm sure they'll be all right, though. But for Max, I'm Erica. We'll be right back. You're watching Kegan 9 on your side.